Today we are looking at the big eight in marital fulfillment. And we'll start with uh, first four today. And I believe that everyone here married or single, you'll find fulfillment. You see, one of the things you need to remember in marriage is this. That living and cleaving is an act. But becoming one flesh is a process. When they pay dowry and you left your father's house, it's an action. That's the wedding is done. But a lot of people spend all your life preparing for wedding and never prepare for marriage. You're not hearing me. It's after the wedding that marriage begins. <laughs> You were not married on the altar. You, are get, you, you get married at home. You were just joined at the altar to begin the marriage. They didn't hear me. Second thing is this. You see, even though early romantic feelings may fade away, it doesn't mean that the love has dried up. Don't get confused in your home, that the way you were having tingling sensations on your stomach when you see the girl has stopped, so you don't love her again. You still love her. They're not hearing me. Is anybody with me? That's why some people say, I, I, I don't feel anything again. Whether you feel it or not, you are committed to her by covenant. Continue. <laughs> you didn't hear me. Are you hearing me? <laughs> love is a commitment. Love is not a feeling. And all the young boys and girls that keep saying, hey, whenever I see him, I, I can't breathe. It's asthma that is worrying you. It's not, uh, it's not love that is worrying you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so please, don't, don't, don't become, don't become uh, somebody that is very frustrated because you are not feeling too much emotion. Are you with me? <laughs> One man was quarreling with his wife. He said, I was a fool when I married you. The woman turned to him and said, I, I was so much in love, I didn't notice you were a fool. <laughs> I was so much in love, I didn't notice. Please, brothers and sisters, just calm down. That it didn't look like you're feeling the thing again doesn't mean it's not there. Don't run away from a good person because you're not feeling a foolish emotion. If you help me, say yes. So please, get set to make your home work. The third thing I want to remember is this, that any couple that finds fulfillment in one another can face whatever life brings. Just find fulfillment in one another. Whatever life brings, you can face it. It is extremely important that your home satisfies you. That the person you say, I love, satisfies you. That you find fulfillment in the one choice you made. That's why we tell you do your best to make the right choice. And after you made the choice, do your best to celebrate that choice for a lifetime. It won't be wonderful every day. It won't be exciting every day. But your commitment is what makes it worth the while. And after some time, the beauty of it and the grace of it will keep multiplying. I speak over you today. Your home will be a testimony. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. So the big eight we are looking at, the first four we are going to look at today is this. Accept your spouse fully. If your home is going to have fulfillment, accept your spouse fully. Second thing, communicate with grace. Third thing, integrate into each other. And fourth thing, open your hand generously. We'll just deal with these four things. And then next week we'll continue. So let's deal with this service. Accept your spouse fully. Accept your spouse. You see, whenever a young man is running around looking for a girl, uh, or a young girl is looking for a husband, there's no challenge. That you looked at A, looked at B, looked at C, looked at D, looked at E. It's not a problem. In fact, you are free to look at uh, 365 people. Every day, find one, look at the person. Is he the one? No. Is he the one? No. 
Don't let anybody make you not look. Keep looking. No? You are not hearing me. Is anybody hearing me? Anybody teaching you not to look at all is lying. You say, but they told me to pray. Uh -uh, Jesus said, watch and pray. So, While you are praying, with one eye closed, one eye I don't hear me. <laughs> so that <laughs> you can keep your eye on what is going on. But you see, the day you walk to the altar and say, I do, it simply means the search is concluded. You are no longer looking again. You are no longer seeking again. You have found what you are looking for. Only a fool keeps searching after he found. Am I talking to somebody here too? And now when you find what you are looking for, don't be surprised that when you get back home and open the package, it doesn't look perfect. Because you are not perfect and nobody is perfect. That's why Genesis 2.22 said, and, is it 2.22? 25, sorry. And they were both naked. And the man and his wife. And they were not ashamed. If you help me say yes. Now when you get back home, you are going to see the person in the person's nakedness. I'm not talking about physical nakedness only. I'm talking about emotional nakedness, spiritual nakedness, financial nakedness, communication nakedness, every kind of nakedness. You're going to see. You are not hearing me. All of us wear clothes here. Anybody wear crack cloth, you don't know. <laughs> no, the way I'm looking at it. What I'm saying is that true? Even our faces, look around here now. All the women, look at all the pancake on their face. <laughs> you don't know, you didn't see her face. I told you of the young man in Australia that got married and they went to the beach and the wife got finished, came out from where she was to jump in the river and the young man said, I'm not married again. It was on the honeymoon. She has removed the eyelashes. Remove the pancake on the face. Remove the wig. Remove everything. And the man said, this is not what I married. All the time I saw you, you were different. He said, don't you know that women make up? He said, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. I'm filing for divorce. And he went and filed for divorce. That the girl deceived him. With beauty that she imported. No, you're not hearing me. There are some people you are looking at here now. You look at their face. They look perfect. You don't know it's pancake. When you get back home and they come out the thing, you know there are some they scrap. They use knife. <laughs> That's why you are going to see the real person. Now some of them is in their character. The girl that be answering you good morning sir and all of that is only to get home. When she goes home and sits down now and then you say now let's discuss. That's when you hear the tune of her voice for the first time. But when you see all of those things, they are both naked. That's when managing the home becomes your responsibility. That's when the nakedness shouldn't make you ashamed. Are you hearing me? That's when unconditional love comes. Because unconditional love creates security in relationships. Are you with me? People come into our lives with baggages. They come with issues. You need to love them unconditionally. Everyone has quirks. Everyone has faults. But those things are not deal breakers. They're just human frailties. So accept them, love them, care for them, and then walk together to improve. Somebody shout amen. One of the things that causes misery in relationship is the mentality of until my partner changes and becomes what I like, I won't love him. I won't love her. It leads to marital misery. You don't withhold love until somebody changes. You love the person until you see the change. And even if the person doesn't make the change, you still love the person. Outside of that, you are going to have a divorce or have enduring to the end. Because some people won't change. No, you didn't hear me. Some people won't change. So you either divorce or you endure to the end. But if you love unconditionally, whether it changes or it doesn't change, your life goes forward. 
The person you left because somebody, uh, uh, you know, some things in his life didn't change. And that person will marry him and live with him. I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> and you find that they actually enjoyed life. I lift my hand over you. In the name that's above every name, the Lord make your home sweet. Yeah. This service doesn't deserve that prayer. Yeah. I say in the name that's above every name, the Lord make your home sweet. Yeah. See, you can have treasure and focus on the floor until your treasure looks like trash. The gear you have is treasure. The man you have is treasure. But you keep focusing on one floor until the treasure begins to look like trash to you. When you are keep trying to change people, it opens the room for, to being critical and being intolerant. God can change the person, but don't nag to change. Accept the person fully. Many times, all of this issue of incompatibility and irreconcilable differences is only a question of maturity. When a person is mature, some things you look at, my mother will say, Enelebui henanya. That there are something you look at and you look at it and look at it and not say a word until it dies. You don't have to quarrel about everything. Are you hearing my voice here today? Some things you are even quarreling about, if you reframe it, it will become humorous. You are, quarreling, you are fighting, you are ready to kill. If you reframe it, I will never forget. This is the true story, I'm not lying. I was in my uncle's house so many years ago. He's late now, both him and his wife. I came into the house and all of that. And then, I don't know, my uncle, I was there, I was in the sitting room, and then he was doing something, and I had him pollute the air. I think he was trying to hide it, but it didn't work. So the thing just came out, pooh! No, you're not hearing me. I didn't say a word. And then the wife said, ah! I wanted to run out of the mat with my uncle, grab that, and say, sit down here. When we are younger, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> See, some things that you are fighting about, if you make it humorous, you will enjoy it. I lift my hand over you. In the name that's above every name, let your home walk. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. Accept each other fully. Listen to me. Why you are busy looking at somebody's fault? I hope you know you have your own. I hope you know that while you are trying to change the other person, the person is also looking at some things to change in your life. While you are looking for the ideal wife, are you the ideal husband? While you are looking for the ideal husband, are you the ideal wife? So calm down and accept the other person. And let's see how God helps us to make life meaningful. Life is too hard that you don't start a battle from the house. Am I talking to somebody here? Life is too hard. Why start a battle from your home? I lift my hand over you. Everything trying to mess up your destiny. I break it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Why don't people accept their spouses fully? The first reason is the spirit of comparison. Spirit of comparison. Uh, look at the other person's wife. Look at the other person's husband. Look at how she, he behaves. Look at the, I remember the story the man of God told a few days ago about the people that were quarreling with a brother in church. They said the brother is making them look bad. Their wives are comparing him, his behavior with uh, uh, their own. Because every son that's arrived in church, he will come out of his car, walk across, and open the door for the wife. We are not hearing. So all the women call him and say he's a, a gentleman. Brother Titus is a gentleman. He's always opening the door for the wife. Why can't you be more like him? So one day they confronted him. The brother laughed. He said, you don't understand. They don't know they open from inside. <laughs> no, you're not here. They don't know they open from inside. So he had to come out, walk across, and bring out the woman from the prison of the door. <laughs> and yet others are envy. <laughs> all that their husbands need to do is make sure the door doesn't spoil the door so it can be opening for them brothers and sisters please what you saw you didn't see you come on are you with me what you think you are celebrating the other person is not celebrating 
The grass is always greener on the other side. But any grass you see very green, somebody is watering it. What are your own? Am I talking to somebody here today? What are your own? Uh, if she's only skinny, brother, she was not skinny when she she was not this big when she came. Now you blow her up. All the work you did got her that way. Enjoy it. Everywhere is quiet now. Are they hearing me here today? Her body changed after the first baby. After the second baby. Enjoy it. Stop complaining. You talk this one, talk that one, talk that one. No. Uh, if, if only my husband can do like this, can do like this. Uh, the people you are watching. I know of a lady that was celebrating a car her husband gave her that I know she bought. The man doesn't have the money to buy the car. But she was celebrating the car. Why? Just out of loyalty in the marriage. But others will say the girl her husband gave her a car for birthday. Now she buy her. And that's the husband to give her. Go buy your own, give your husband, make him give you. The one that they look me. It's like all the women are angry today. They saw Wednesday, the pastor was on our side. Why is he tormenting us today? I'm not, I'm just, this is both sides. Lift up your hand. The Lord give you peace. Amen. I wish I can hear that. Amen. amen. Stop comparing. Stop comparing. Huh? Are you with me? And what your husband can do, try and help to do it. What your wife can do, try and help to do it. Stop comparing. The second thing that makes people not accept the other person fully is focusing on the past. Things have happened in your past. Either before you got married or after you got married. There's been some hurts. There's been some failures. There's been some issues. If you help me, say yes. A lady this morning when I got up, I saw a man from one of the people that watch us an altar of mercy all the way from Uganda and wrote about some things and all of that. And I started replying. And maybe she's watching now. And I just replied the test. And I tried to, you can't continue in this way. Anyone that's focusing on the past, brothers and sisters, nobody goes forward looking backward. The rear view mirror is very small. The windscreen is wide. Because the people that made the steering want you to focus up. If you are going to look back, it's just that small thing. You glance at it and continue your journey. Stop. You can't be driving forward like this. This is what some of you are doing. Uh, he cheated on me seven years ago. My heart broke. Oh. My heart has not returned. If your heart has not returned, pack your ngongo. Go. So that you can find peace and the man can find peace. You can't be in this as punishing me for seven years. No, you are not hearing me. I want to touch you. I can't touch you because something happened seven years ago. I, I want us to go out. No, every time you are quarreling, every time you are reminding me, pack yangongo. If you can't get over it, let's get over each other. Calm down and get this done. Am I talking to somebody here? Get this done. Get this sorted out. That problem that happened, I'm talking about men and female. Are they hearing my voice here? Get over it. You can't live in bitterness for life. You can't be punishing me for one offense. I'm not serving a life sentence. <laughs> Is anybody hearing me? Your prison, not the end. Every day I have to, I, I have to keep apologizing for not remembering your birthday three years ago. Turn the fire set up. If you had my voice, say yes. yes. Stop focusing on the past. Get over it and move forward. Yesterday ended last night. Today is a new day. Reframe your life and move on. He said, I can't love him. I can't love him. He spoiled something in my heart. That's why I'm saying, if you can't love him, you can't marry him. He said, Pastor, are you advocating divorce in your own case? Yes. Now you're getting angry. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. 
Marriage for marriage's sake is not the pre- 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 program of God. So you get out of that. I love you. He said, but pastor, I, I need to heal. Seven years is a long time. Three years is a long time. One year is a long time. Until the church begins to confront people headlong. These things will continue. We can't keep living in bitterness. You say, oh, he has not apologized. If he has not apologized, forgive him unconditionally. Forgiveness and reconciliation it begins in somebody's heart. Come on, are you hearing me? Start with giving him love and credit. For your own sake. For your own sake. You don't release people because they deserve it. You release people because God gave you love. Am I talking to somebody here? Just release them. We are a church that hates divorce. We are a church that honors marriages. We are a church that stands by homes. That's why I'm teaching you like this. Because your home cannot be an evil place. We have battle and darkness and contention and confusion is there. If you raise children like that, you lost two generations. You are own and the next. Am I talking to somebody here today? You can't do that. You can't do that. Are you here? The third reason people don't accept others is a cover up for their own inadequacy. Many times, people that look at themselves, that have low self-esteem, project it on other people. They keep judging you for their own weaknesses. No, you are not hearing me. If you have my voice, say yes. Any man that has low self-esteem wants his wife to be the best so he can be using her as a crutch. Everywhere he goes, that's my wife, that's my wife, that's my wife, that's my wife. Any woman with low self-esteem so wants the wife to be the best so that anywhere you go, you can use the person as a, you know, uh, to advertise you. Calm down. No matter how your wife is or your husband is, you be fooling yourself. No, you're not hearing. Do you know why some people that are illiterate want to marry PhD holders? So that the woman can be the replacement for their illiteracy. Do you know why some men can't afford for their wife to look different? Because they want to compete out there with a wife. No, compete by yourself. It's not my beauty that competes for you. It's how much do you have in your pocket? How much impact are you making in life? Stop making me the issue. Make yourself the issue. I think I'm in the wrong house. Are they hearing my voice here? Stop. Every time you're harassing a woman. My friends came to the house. The soup wasn't okay. You, if you cook, you will die. He said, Pastor, you don't know how to cook. Me, am I quarreling? You are the one quarreling. If you have my voice, say yes. You are the one quarreling. That's what I'm telling you. Me, that I don't know how to cook. Anything they bring, I eat. No, you didn't hear me. Anything that, no complaint, I eat. We move. I stretch my hand toward you. In the name that's above every name, receive grace now. I can't hear your amen. Another reason some people don't accept their spouse fully is the influence of third parties. When you hang around with family members and friends that are always critical of your spouse, you will not be able to accept the person. Your mother always finds something your wife is not doing well. Your sisters and brothers always find something that your husband is not doing well. And when they do that, you don't put your feet down and excuse me, you are crossing a line. You are crossing a line. He says, excuse me, mama, mama, yes. Thank you for burning me. But mama, according to the covenant of the Bible, you are now my extended family. This woman is my primary family. I don't negotiate that. Brothers and sisters, please look up here. You see what I just told you now? That's how I talk. That's how I talk to my own family. When my junior sister was in the house, I had a quarrel with my sister. And my mother sent for me to talk about as mama. I said, mama, calm down. This is what the Bible says. According to the Bible, covenant is thicker than bite. Me and her are one flesh. This is the primary family. These ones are my extended family. I am a Bible person, not a traditionalist. I am going to heaven, not going to Juju house. The way you hand, you see, everywhere is quiet. Because many of you want to receive covenant testimonies without being covenant people. 
You want kingdom life without kingdom responsibility? No. The two has become one flesh, not two fleshes. One flesh. There's one man that looked, he, he, the way he's folding his hand, his coat is about to tear. Oh boy, calm down. Don't have heart attack. This is the Bible. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Just go and apply it. It will work. Touch your neighbor and say, we will work. You have a bad neighbor. Turn to the other one and say, you will work. Lift your hand above your head. I declare over you today, your home will work. Anytime people begin, is anytime you learn to stand up for your family, things change. I told you a story many years ago. When this church was still younger, I hired a lady that was one of my wife's very close friends at that time. Had a master's degree. I applied her to be the church administrator. She came in. And she was serving well. Had only two problems with her. One is simple. That every time she will have issues with my other leaders, which I didn't like. The second thing is that God told me to ask her to stop work. And I don't have any reason. I came to the office that day, sat down in my office. Father, thank you for today. We're going to have a beautiful time. Holy Ghost, take over. He said, ask her to leave. I said, but she has not done anything wrong. He said, ask her to leave. Now, yes. I called and I said, listen, I was praying just now. Look at what the Holy Ghost told me. I don't know why, but I want to apologize. I'm going to ask you to look. go. She tried to talk to me. I said, I am not talking to you about whether I plan to fire you. We didn't have a quarrel. There's nothing wrong in your report. I said, the Holy Ghost said, ask you to leave. And this church is under somebody's management. It's called the Holy Ghost. I'm just a caretaker here, so I'm going to ask you to leave. Now, the people that are older members of this church know that my asking her to leave saved this church a crisis. Because of something that happened somewhere that could have brought in a problem for us. If God didn't give me that more than almost a year before that thing came up. Many of the people here know what happened later. Come on, are you with me? But it was God that was preempting that thing. I wasn't aware. So I just said, you need to go. She got angry, left my office, went to my house. Brought in my wife was sitting down with a few friends and all that. And she goes, look at what Pastor did. This and that. She's talking to my wife as her friend. And just ranting and talking and I have not told my wife. I just heard in the office and I told her. There was no discussion. My wife said, please stop. Please stop. He said, please stop. He said, never in your life walk into my house or anywhere and speak about my husband that way. If he said this something wrong or he, he, anything, he said, when he comes back, I will find out why he did that or whatever. But the way you are talking, Please, you better stop it now or our relationship ends today. Suddenly, sense entered her that you don't have to know whether I'm right or wrong to defend me. You just have to know I am your husband. Am I talking to somebody here? Too? No, no, no. No, that's how he behaves. He behaves erratic. He behaves erratic. Let us wait. That's how many women will say he behaves erratic. I, I need to talk to him. He should pick a phone. Uh, why, why, why did you do that? My friend is here now. No. Uh, that's, not, that's how crazy people behave. We are children of God. We're not crazy. Are you guys okay? Yes, Lift your hand above you. May God give you wisdom. Yes, I thought a man will land here. Yes, so accept each other. So what do you do? Number one, know your spouse story and motivations. If you're going to accept each other, know the person's story and know the person's motivations. Sit down, get to know your wife. Get to know the things that are making her behave the way she behaves. Get to know some things about her background that gives the quirks. The same thing with your husband. Don't just assume. Get to know the person. And then joyfully love the person and prayerfully guide the person into grace. You know, in Ephesians about 5, 21, the Bible says, submitting yourselves to one another in the fear of God. Next verse. That's the only scripture I'm living today. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. Keep going. 
For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he may present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Next verse. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. Keep going. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourish it and cherish it, even as the Lord, the church. I will stop here. For we are members of his body and of his flesh, of his bones. Okay, read the next one. Go to the next one. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and the two shall be what? One flesh. I want you to understand. The Bible says Jesus loves the church. Jesus is nourishing the church. Jesus is working on the church to present the church to himself. A glorious church. Are you here? Yes. Huh? Yes. Have you noticed that after all these many years, the church is still not as good as it should be? Talk to me. Yes. Have you noticed that Jesus hasn't walked away? That his presence is still there. His life is still there. His grace is still there. He still covers our nakedness and still forwards us. Do that in your home. Honor your wife. Honor your husband. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Accepting one another in the fear of God. And another thing you need to do if you're going to accept each other fully, always try to temper your expectations. Temper your expectations. Many of you that are getting married now, please temper your expectations. In everything in life, give a margin of error. Am I talking to somebody here? Give a margin of error. When I was a younger pastor, I had a lot of people that were in the church at that time that were toxic to me. Their expectations of a pastor was beyond what I could handle. Every time they were very, very critical, God helped me and I let many of them go. I know some of them right now that don't have a church they are attending. Some of them that went and started their own churches, their churches failed. There's an attitude you cannot bring to somebody's life. Nobody is perfect. There's no perfect pastor anywhere. If you want to be the perfect pastor, go and start your own ministry. You will find out that no, you can't meet everybody's expectation. Come on, you're not hearing me. Oh, somebody is sick. You haven't come. I'm not going to come. Because I can't put myself into 10 places. You didn't hear me. Ah, I don't accept that. That's your problem. You must wed me. No. There's no law in the Bible that says I must wed you. And if not wedding you means you're not born again. Don't be born again now. But you're wedded. Carry your wife. Go. Ah, ah, every, my pastor must wed me. I'm not coming. I am the bishop of the house. If you want me to come, pay me. In your community, when bishop wants to do pontifical hammermans, don't you pay him? Have you paid me? All of you that want to wear and you want me to be there, just write a check in six zeros. I will show up. <laughs> Turn the fire setter. But I want to be in your wedding, but I can't be. Huh? He didn't attend my child, child dedication. I, I hosted things so that I won't come. After preaching five services, I won't come. Even three, I won't come. Yeah, I don't understand. How can he come? Hey, I'm a big man. <laughs> come on, are you with me? Those expectations are not necessary. You don't kill your man of God. I don't know if you're getting me. It's only you that will solve my problem. Somebody sent me a text. He said, Pastor, you know, I said, go to the family life. He said, no, it's only you that can handle this. It's only you that, I said, there's nobody that starts a case in Supreme Court. Start with magistrate. No, you didn't hear me. After that, go to high court. Then go to court of appeal. By the time you come to Supreme Court, you people are calm down. No, you're not hearing me. I said, why must I start the case? He said, no, only you. My husband doesn't respect anybody other than you. I said, oh. 
Is that so? He said, yes. I said, no, he's not one of us. Because you must respect the system before you respect the person. You didn't hear me. Glory to God. Finally, how do you accept somebody? Be patient and positively celebrate their growth. Be patient and positively celebrate their growth. Be patient. Every growth you see, thank God for it. Keep encouraging the person. Keep making the person know you are getting better. Not every time. You keep picking and picking and picking the wrong ones. And keep throwing it to the face of the person. Until the person gets to a point he stops trying. Or she stops trying. Because each time you keep harassing somebody with a negative. After some time the person stops making effort. Don't do that in your home. Trust the Lord. Stand to your feet.